Evening everybody, greetings all. This video today is about establishing yourself within the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? So we've been talking throughout all the videos that the 12 tribes of Israel, 12,000 from each one of them, making up the 144,000, that's the one that's going to be saved. So you have to be grafted within those tribes. So this video today, I'm showing you step by step how to get yourself established within one of them tribes that you choose, okay? And I'll show you how to choose a tribe and how to establish yourself within the tribe and be acceptable okay so you have to make sure you follow these steps and um, do your own research as i recommend in this video okay because you have to be part of the tribe right some a lot of people have been asking me now do they have to move from the united states do they have to move from uk do they have to move to be part of the tribe no you do not have to pick up and move why because you can establish yourself a tribe over there where you at okay you do not have to physically move to be recognized by the tribe but you have to do a communication a whole lot of communication with the people from that tribe especially them decision makers them elders the tribal leaders the, the village kings everybody so you have to make communication with that's going to be the hardest part if you do not move but you do that can happen even if you don't move depending on your communication skills how much you can spread your communication so it can be heard okay so to answer those kind of questions you do not have to move to be to be part of a tribe okay you know you can be here still and establish yourself a tribe okay i'll show you the steps but having said all that if you do not move, there's a whole bunch of disadvantages, okay? Some you can bear. I mean, I'll read it out to you. So it depends on how you, how strong you are. So here's the advantages of not moving, okay? So, no, no, no. Let me start with the advantages of moving, okay? So you can, you know, do the reverse, then disadvantage. So the advantage of moving is you will have your own free land. No mortgages, now, nothing. You get free land to build as long as you are in a tribe then you get free land you can build a farm and produce your own natural organic stuff okay so that's the advantage of moving okay number two you will learn your tribe's way of life and language so much better okay so you I mean that's self-explanatory because if you live in a community that speak that language you learn it better and faster okay that that's just given and you know the habits and how things happen in there and the number three you can do most of the customs required in the scripture currently done by the tribes okay so you can see if you see talk, the bible the scripture talking about circumcision and these people coming out and this you actually see it for yourself okay everything that you, you read about in the bible you see it yourself in the villages because a lot of them villages still keep the the old traditions that so many required of the 12 tribes but some of them lost it some kept so depending on the tribe you are at but you can actually even see other tribes what they're doing right so it's easier to have that view because you're already there right that's the main main advantages of moving but you can you don't have to be moving to be in a tribe all right i repeat that so people can ask now here's a big old disadvantage disadvantage of not moving again is that big old dark cloud because if you stay in the stage you don't move because you think ah, i can communicate i'll establish a tribe which is good you can stay here and establish a tribe and then when it's time to move then you just move you know where you're gonna go to but that whole thing of staying here while there's a big dark cloud which is a disadvantage okay and that is that very that mark of the people call it mark of the beast where everybody's gonna have a barcode you as you know today every product that we buy is already got a barcode in the back and id driving license healthcare, card cash anything that's going to the bank you access it through the barcode too in that card so now all of that barcode all of that functionality with it, the barcode, healthcare, whatever, is going to all just be embedded on your forehead and in hand, that barcode. So that means instead of having your card, your ID card on your hand, you'll have something on your forehead, that barcode. So they will scan you on your head and then know, okay, you're trying to buy stuff. Here, let's see how much money goes in your bank account. You're trying to get healthcare. Let's see what kind of pre-existing, what kind of allergy you have. They'll have everything on the barcode which is on your forehead or the hand depending on you know probably what blood type whatever you are but they'll put either on your forehead or your hand all right so that is coming and it's written in the prophets in revelations 13 over there I put it out for you 
where everybody is going, everybody won't be able to buy or sell, you read it for yourself, unless you got that barcode on your forehead or your right hand. Okay, it's written in prophecy. Now, the result of you not having, not, not accepting, because a lot of people go, no, it's a mark of the peace we're taking me. People read scripture. So they'll reject this, okay? So now when they when you reject it, then that means you cannot get health insurance. You'll get sick and die at home. You cannot get no health And then you cannot even prove your identity. You cannot prove that you are who you are. So you cannot sign anything. You cannot get a home. You cannot get bills. You cannot, you cannot do nothing, all right? Because you, you don't have an ID to prove that you are who you are. So where are you going to live? Where are you going to get utilities? Where are you going to... I mean, that's just, you know, I'm just showing you the reality here. And then the third major thing you're going to have is you won't be able to buy cash. You, you won't be able to do nothing. You won't buy nothing. You won't buy or sell. That's what Revelation is even showing. You won't be able to buy or sell anything. You can't even produce your own food because you need a permit to farm, right? You, so you can be, oh, I'm going to get my own little land and buy it and farm. You need permit for that. And to get permit, you're going to have to go somewhere and sign. How are you going to sign if you don't even have an ID? Because the ID is supposed to be back, back on your forehead. So at that point in time, it will be an emergency move. Move or get crushed. And then you will have no other choice but to move. So that's why I'm suggesting that if you can try to start moving now, establishing yourself a tribe, so that by the time this hits the ground, then you're already ready. You know where you're going to catch a plane to and land where and who's going to accept you from there and show you the ropes and show you around in that tribe. So, but don't just sit back and sit in the system and the system is taking care of you. The system one day is going to tell you you're going to have a barcode now, no more cash and stuff. What you gonna do then? So that's why I'm saying it's not necessary to move right now to establish a tribe, but you have to start planning to move right now because there's a whole lot of things coming and you will not accept them. Right? Okay. Let's move on to the steps now. How to establish that tribe back in the twelve tribes of Israel? All right, the Bantu people, Bantu, Bantu. Get it straight. So the six steps I put out for you. Okay. So you have to just you know understand each one. I'll explain. Let's start with the first one. The first one is you have to research. Now I'm putting some work on your side now too. You have to research the areas where Bantu tribes live in. Okay, understand the city versus the ruler, what the ruler look like, how the life is. Get a climate, get your mindset. Okay, because now you come from the western spoil area where everything is just a press of a burn. So now, in the rural areas, you have to go pick up the water from the water well and wherever else. Like you read in the Bible, Old Testament, there was no taps in there. The Sonina would open up a borehole. They call, we call it borehole. or There will be just this clean, spring, sparkling clean water coming out of the ground, out of nowhere. So go pick up the water from there. You bottle it up, bring it to your home. and So just learn how things are, how things work in the city versus rural, you know, so you know what you're getting into. Right, that's the point of number one. So you're researching. I gave you some clues of the areas you can start with. You know, where the bunch of people are mainly at, you know. Boom, that's the area there. In the southern part of area, the land beyond Kush, that's what the Bible even identifies. Land beyond Kush, that's Kush is Ethiopia. So you learn in the southern part of Africa. So that's where you want to start. You're researching and looking at what kind of tribes is there, which one behaves like you think you are behaving. And, you know, find out. Okay, I, I can't put everything in this video. Okay, I keep my video short because my people in the villages are complaining that I'm finishing their airtime because they got to download all this stuff. They run out of uh, Wi-Fi airtime. Okay, right. So keep it short. Number two, select, choose. Okay, select a bunch of tribe you think your forefathers came from. So when they came up here as slaves, where did they come from? So you choose a tribe you think. And you need to have strong evidence for that. You have strong evidence to show for that. And in that, when you're trying to build that con that evidence, please, I can tell you right now, you have to avoid them tattoos. I know a whole lot of brothers and sisters up here. They got a lot of them tattoos. I don't know how you're going to get rid of those, cover them or whatever. But that is totally unacceptable in their villages. Totally unacceptable. And the, even the scripture, I mean, scripture bans this. You cannot make engraved whatever in your body. But anyway, nobody's trying to judge you right now because that's way past. You already got it. So you just got it. If you're trying to get buy-in from the tribes, 
you have to make sure you divorce yourself from that tattoo. So don't be, don't like your tattoo. Your tattoo must be a mistake to your brain. It must be, oh, I made a mistake. I didn't know. That's where you should, that's how you're supposed to look at your tattoo. So that, you know, you don't be walking around like, oh, I got a lion. Look up in here, bragging about the tattoo. No, no, you can't. You must be divorced from your tattoos. Okay, so them tattoos are not acceptable, and them the the um those hairstyle you shave the sides that even the scripture bans this thing. Don't shave the sides of your head and stuff. You 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 can't do stuff like that. Okay, so you have you know when you're trying to get me, you might end up video you know conference and trying to you know convince the people from that tribe that guys just you know I'm from you all and stuff you know. So you have to make sure you appeal to them because they will shut you out. They won't literally tell you, hey, but they'll just stop taking your calls and stuff. So you need to make sure. And the dress code. Men cannot have jewelry. That earrings and that that looks like you're a mixed breed because it's only mixed breed people in the in the in the in the Bantu area now that are look like okay, once you start acting like this, they, they see you as you're one of the Lao people. Like the church of Lao Dike, they look warm. You they see you as a Lao. It's called a Lao. A Lao is a person who, who's mixed, who's lukewarm. Like you see in Revelations, the, the seventh church, Lao dish. So you have no mixed blood or Lao behavior. Okay, so if you got hair, long hair, don't flat iron it because it looked like you're a Lao. You're a mixed breed. All right? And, you know, man, no short anything. Don't, you know, it's just normal stuff. Okay, and now, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that you can find out. I'm showing you steps now. You can find out how, you know, village acting like and stuff so just look decent that's the bottom line okay and then the third thing you must contact a bantu people belonging to that tribe you think you're coming from so and then you you know check on youtube so if you if you choose a tribe that you think you're from in the now from that 12 tribes then you choose a person or people that you want to communicate, open that communication with. They can tell you what this, where is that. And so you have to have a contact person, okay, from that tribe. Check on YouTube friends and learn their habits and behavior and some words to use, mannerisms, dress code, how you must look like. Like I just said in number two over there. So that person is going to be some kind of a guide for you, you know, tell you how things are supposed to be and how you talk like. You can't use slang and this and that. So, because you're preparing to appeal to the kings, right? Because the kings are the ones that are going to make a final decision whether you're accepted into that tribe or not. Believe me, the kings are. So, your name will appear into the king's list or you cannot be part of that village, right? That's how the or village or tribe, because each tribe live in villages. So, you have to make sure you cannot be a city person and think you're part of a tribe. No. You, even the people who live in the cities, they know back home, my tribe is this. They can point it back and they can go back home every weekend or some once a month, whatever. But they, they belong somewhere. So you, you, you have to belong somewhere before you can maybe have a house in the city or whatever. Okay, so the belong somewhere is what I'm trying to get you to establish yourself in a village first. Belong to a tribe, whether you live in a city or not. Okay, so you, you have to contact the person and talk to that person and that person is going to guide you and tell you what works and what don't. Now, the number four is to seek a representation. Now, this is this are all, this are all steps important. So you seek a representation, find out who the village king is. Now, we're building up to the serious people. Find out who the village king is for that bunch of tribe. And get a man, I bolded that man up because women cannot represent you. Get a man from that village to talk to him about your intentions to the village king, you know, pave the way for you. So that person, number three, that, that contact person where he's going to tell you how to behave and stuff. Try, try and make sure there's a man as part of, the, you know, a man is somebody now who's, who's an adult like from 21 someone from 18 actually upward but to somebody more than 21 years old who's strong who look like a man of valor called the bible called the man of valor. somebody who's 21 and above you know the older the better because the older is closer to the elder okay and then they can have access to the elders but the guys who are like 25 24 they're still youngish and the elders won't really take them that serious because they're like oh okay this this is some fun because they're still called fun if you see remember my previous video they're still in the fun age not the elder age 
So if you can find, even the Mfana is fine, they will keep pointing you in the right direction, but whoever you find, there must be a man to represent you, okay? It can be females, and, but a man got to be part of that group because number four will not happen if it's just females, okay? So number four, you have to find out a, a village king, who the village king is. For that Banjo tribe and get a man from that village all right because you gotta know the village king first so when you talk to the people you look serious too you know the king of that village you're trying to get into or that tribe that you got you gotta know them history too and you know. so that person because now that person that man will be representing you in you know meetings this is a typical village king meeting that's a king probably that man standing there is the king they are so approachable these folks and and you know it's so easy to approach them. I mean, I mean, I mean, I was there in the southern part of Africa. I used to go to villages, speak to kings. They're so approachable. They're people. They they don't look high upon themselves. They they're just village people who are you know who are people's people. I don't know how else to explain it. So they go, but as you look at them, you think ah, these people can be a walkover. I can outsmart the wisdom that comes out of these people. You see them? They look too general and stuff. Somebody just over, just listen to their their con their meetings. It's wisdom that come out of those people. Don't look at them and think there's nothing in there. Wisdom that come out of these meetings. Just look at them when they're sitting over there. I'm just sitting and just talking, probably discussing some issue. Your name will be part of the things that they'll be discussing. They say, hey, there's this guy. He coming from the states. Yeah, he come from the states. Ah, uh, yeah, he he wants to be part of us. Ah, oh, why? Why? What what proof that he's here? Because we don't want to be taking the the colored people here coming. All oh, this kind of colored behavior in this. Yeah, you know that, that's how typically the meetings go. Okay, and the wisdom. Yeah, I mean I can repeat that. Don't look at how they look. The brain in there. But anyway, so you will have. So a man, you see in this meeting, there's no woman sitting in this meeting. It's only men. So then when all of them have discussed, so the men you find will represent you, will come and sit with them, will sit with the people because he's coming from the same village, yeah, from the same tribe. He'll sit with them and, and bring your name up and, and talk for you over there. Okay, because you are all the way in the States, right? So you can't be part of that. But if you are, if you got money, you can fly down there, that is even better. Then you can be part of the meetings. You can sit in there. You bring a refreshment because that's all they want. If you bring a refreshment, the king is good. They don't care about you pay them. They don't charge for this service. They don't charge. They have community people. That's how villages. So you won't be charged. You just bring refreshments for them to drink and, you know, eat a little bit, bring it, put it in the center there as the meeting goes on and stuff. So... So when the village king has, has decided, because now the king, king, the overall king of the, a set of villages, or like king of the whole tribe, won't be part of those initial meetings. These are just each and every village with its own king. So when all of that, you know, everything has been approved, yeah, we think, yeah, he's fine, we think, because there's a whole, if you're not even there, you're just represented by that guy, there got to be something that convinces them that you are what they think you can be part of their community because they really protect, they don't want pedophiles and people who are just crazy in that villages. So they sit in there. I wonder some of the kings, they used to call me to be advisors. So, hey, I was like, wow, really? So, you know, they, they, they are really open, you know, you know, they're really open. So before I came here, they wanted me to be advisors. Like, Can you come in and be advisor? I don't know what they saw in me, but anyway, but I couldn't be sitting part of the meetings. I would just go in one-on-one -on -one advice and you know, talk and talk like a consultant kind of thing. And then they'll, you know, talk in those meetings, you know, just, I don't know why, but anyway, let's. So when everything is is approved, when everything is approved, they're comfortable with you and stuff because you're not there. And then there will be a comedy meeting, the whole, you know, even females can be part of that. So it's more like feedback to tell the community, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. As you all have all seen us having meetings and stuff, this is what we were talking about. And we've accepted this man as part of our village. He'll be staying next, you know, it's more like feedback at these kind of meetings now. Okay. So you have to understand this, this village. Now, this here happens, but now the king, the village, the, 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 the overall king of the whole tribe will have to approve all of that. 
before even that feedback happens because the the the, the tribe now the traditional leader they're called traditional leader or tribal king they they work hand in hand with the presidents of the country because now they govern how the the tribe happens because the tribe is like millions of people the tribe is not just a little few millions of people the whole nation is a tribe a certain tribe and then there'll be another million like Typical example, like the Kosa people, I think there's about 6 million of them now, some, nine, some of the 6 or 9 million of them, just Kosa tribe. Now there's other the Zulus, Zulus, another set of millions, and another tribe. So you have to, so they'll have one king per tribe, okay? I'm not talking about the village king, I'm talking about the tribal king. That one is the one that's going to approve what the village king is bringing to him. Say, our uh, village king... Have, have agreed to accept this person or not. so we need your final approval okay now they work hand in hand with the president who looks at the country's laws and everything as you can see that's a tribal king right in the middle there i think he's a he's a Kosa king so he's a, he's a mr scow so he is the Kosa king in the middle so that that's the president on one side and the former president on one side so they, i'm just trying to show you they work hand in hand with the president here's another one too that's the swati tribe different tribe swati tribe from swaziland in southern part of africa again that's the president on one side so they work hand in hand with the, the state's president okay i'm trying to show you a few examples so you can actually understand that this tribal king now the swati so that's how how it works is the king it, it on there's no voting for the tribal kings now Nothing goes, you're going to vote for a tribal king. No, it don't work like that. It goes according to the bloodline. So the father and then the, his son takes over from him when he grows like King David, Solomon take, took over and stuff. You can read it in the Old Testament. So that's how it happens with the tribe as well. So that man in the center there, in there, his son, that's his son over there. He's the next king when he goes off. So that's the king, Swadi the third. He's going. He's, he's taking over from him. Okay. So I'm trying to show you here. That's you know, same as Kenya. There's the 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 king of the area there, and then there's the Basutu. Basutu. There's their king over there too. So you have to understand that they work hand in hand with the presidents, the national presidents. All the laws are aligned. So you you need that approval from that tribal king. You know, so that when they say you have to go get a new ID, the president has already approved. You're not breaking no kind of laws and stuff. Okay, but we come into that part later on. So yeah, so there you go. But so, so now this this the, the there's the king king. I'm just trying you you know the king. So now what I'm trying to get you to understand. Sometimes the tribal king, the king of a tribe, can be the same person who is the president, but that's very rare. It's very rare because a lot of people think, ah, there's bias, there's bias and bias. No. Now, it's very rare that the tribal king, so it, it just because people will think now because he's a Zulu tribal king, he's going to represent the country. If he's a president, only the Zulus are going to get stuff. Or if he's a Kosa guy, like Mandela was the tribe, the, the king of the Kosa tribe, but at the same time, he was the president of the whole country with all the different tribes. So... This, this situation is very rare. It's happened twice in, in the southern part of Africa now, where the Zulu tribal king was also the president of the whole country with all the different tribes. So I'm trying to show you that that happens as well. So your name will appear at the president's list <laughs> to, to seek his approval as the tribal king because you want to belong to that tribe. But at the same time, he's sitting looking at the at country's law. All right? Okay, so you understand how things happen now. You... So number five, number five, you when you get approved now, because now all, when they, when you get your final approval, that means the tribal king, I mean the village king, approved you and then escalated you to the tribe king. Because now you want to belong to the tribe king, which might be the same guy as the president, like I just said, or is a separate guy who will sit next to the president and discuss your case, your situation. So when all of that has been approved, you've been vetted and stuff. Because when I think you will have to make an appearance of some sort or something. I don't know because this is a serious approval and it takes a lot of work to get approved. Believe me, especially with the Kosa community, even the Zulus, especially, I mean, in the southern part of Africa, no one is accepted, totally no one into a tribe. You, you have to have very strong evidence that your forefathers came as slaves up in here and show proof. You will have to, I, I don't know how else to, I mean, even now, them Kosa people, and they, they don't, especially them Kosa people, I must stress that out, because they don't even accept marriage with other 
tribes now. I'm talking about other tribes. If you bring somebody from a Zulu or somebody from Nigeria or somebody from Kenya or something, they, they, they're not comfortable. The tribe is not comfortable because they think you're bringing other nations into the tribe. Okay, you're bringing behaviors, strange behaviors. You're making people get loose. So it's, it's so hard if you want to come into a tribe, especially if you want to come to the Kosa tribe, you have, you have like very, some DNA proof, some, something that proves that your forefathers and your behavior and everything else. Okay, so same as the different tribes. They, they all have the sum come. These are generic stuff that you must have. Okay, so now when you've been approved, you've gone through all that trouble because you must go through that trouble because that mark of the beast is coming anyway. It's going to push you out. So you must start preparing now. Yeah, you ain't got much choice and we don't know when the, the devil is going to introduce this thing. So you number five, when you've been approved, so number five kicks in, you get a clan. Now, when I say you get a clan, if accepted, you will be allocated a clan name. Okay. You will be allocated a clan, and then there's a clan name for that. And therefore, required to change your last name. I'll explain that why. Into that clan's last name, you are located to. That means like the house. Of, let me show you a picture. Let's explain this thing. So, a group of last names belongs to one clan name. Okay, so that's now the tribe. So, a group of last names belong to one clan. So, there will be last name one, less, less name two, less name. All that group of they belong to one clan. The house of this, like you see in the Bible, they use that a lot. So the house of, uh, last, like when they saw some sin is coming out of the grave, they say, oh, and they call him with, uh, um, with his last, with his, um, what do you call this now? Uh, with his clan. Okay. So you, 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 the clan is like the bunch of last names. So a group of last names belong to one clan. Okay. Now a group of clans belong to one tribe. So. Now, how you belong to a tribe, you cannot be Washington or white and think you're going to be part of a tribe. No, you cannot. You cannot be in a tribe unless you are in a clan. You cannot be in a clan unless your last name belongs to that clan. So that's why I'm saying you will have to change your, your last name into a, the last name that belongs to the clan of that tribe you think you've identified. Even today... If a son, if somebody has been born from a different clan, maybe a Kosa person went and got pregnant, a baby daddy from another name, Lizul or whatever, and they say, no, we want that, that, that son, if they want to be part of the tribe of the Kosa tribe or whatever, that son will have to change his last name to the last name of that clan if they want to benefit from the things that are tribal. Tribal, unless they're gonna float around and leave, and but if they want to benefit to the tribal things, then they have to change, and then they can be addressed. Ah, you know, you cannot sit in a crawl along the elders, be in meetings, and represent the tribe when you are not in a clan. In that clan, you have to change your last name and be part of that. You can't even inherit stuff if your last name is not even in a government. Because now remember, the tribal kings work together with the government to represent. This is how we tribes work, and then the government will accommodate in, within the law. So even the government, if, if you are a, you are children of a certain and then you got different last names and then maybe that parent dies, you will not inherit nothing if your last name is not the same as that parent. You have to change your last name to be the same as that parent. And if you go there and show your ID, they say, no, ma'am, you my kids, you have to change, they have to change your, ID, your, your last name to be the same. So that's how tribes work. Okay, you have to understand that. So you will have to change your last name so you can be part of a clan. And then the clan is going to a tribe, right? And then, so you, it's, I mean, there's long lines then. You must embrace yourself. There's long lines at the ID department there. You stand there and try to change your last name. You be prepared to stay a whole day trying to, you know, stand in line. It's like the DMV, right? In here, stand in line and wait there, right? Okay. Now, the last one, the last one is now you already got a clan, you know, which tribe you are. So it's a matter of just walking to the village king and here, you show your ID and this is me. Now, the IDs that are still there, are they still the book of lives or the ID? Now, in the villages, I think they can still look at the book of life. That's the one, in, even in Sinus's times, they were using as the ID. In the book of life where you, you have your name, your picture, and then you have your kids. In, in the, and then where, you, which, I mean, I showed it in the other video. The book. So, but the government came up with a new, like when Mandela came out in the southern part of Africa now, 
they come with IDs, so there's new IDs now, barcoded IDs. So those barcoded IDs, they call them barcoded IDs. So those barcoded IDs are the ones that are used in the government. And so you can show your barcoded ID and say you belong to this tribe, or I think the village king will still you know, accept the book of life if you still have it. But I know coming from this side, you won't have the book of life. That's old. But in the villages, they still have it. So you throw your ID, whatever they gave you there when you when you change your last name and they mailed it out because they will mail it out. They mailed your ID book out or ID card. They use cards now. Your ID card out. Then you show it to your village. So then the village king can assign you your land, the land that you want, and, you know, a piece of land over there. And then they say, okay, they throw a stone. They don't use measuring stuff. They throw a stone. Say, okay, where the stone end? That's where your, your land end. They throw the stone to another direction. Okay, that's another corner of yours. So each, each, the, the stone uh, represent the corner, the, 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 the way your land ends, like in the Bible. I repeat now, in the, where the cornerstone is, that's where your land ends. Okay, so, so that's what the village king does. Throw a stone, one corner, and say your land goes up to there, from there to there, and then he allocates you there. But you choose it, it's an area that you want, because I heard somebody talking about, I want that, oh, well, where's that village? I want it by the beach. Yeah, so find a tribe that, that got a, a, an area, a village, because now the tribe will have areas, you know, find a place that, you know, choose. Then the king will, I mean, allocate you an area. A lot of the people in the villages don't really like areas close, they like close to the beach like that. Because, you know, what if the water and the, probably, you know, it's just not what everybody's running after. Unlike here in the western, you know, beach house and stuff. Over there it's like, okay, whatever, one the place that got grazing land so our sheep and stuff can go and graze and eat. They want not going to drink that seawater, ain't nobody going to eat that. So they want a place that they can use. <laughs> So now I know after some time, even though a lot of people are talking about, no, we want a village that's got a beach view and sea house and stuff. After some time, when you know the value of the green land, open space, and then you know, okay, this beach thing ain't really that much of a value here. But anyway, yeah. So that's what you got to do. All them six steps, then you're covered. Then, you know, you got your land and everything. You build your own house over there. You put your relatives, your community people that you've already made relations with. They can, you know, live, look after your house over there. And you can go live out here in, out in the city because there's a city too. The city, buy a house, there's mortgage. Now, the city works different. The, the city works in a Western way. So there's mortgage, you buy, you got to buy. But now if they already got that mark of the beast, you can't even buy that. So you'll just be, you know, staying in the village setting. But at least you've got something, all right? You can live. So now I want to end this video with, with a, um, a video, a clip that just show you how village things work and how um, the, the government values the village things, the, the tribal kings. Okay? All right. Bye. Jacob Zuma used his address to the National House of Traditional Leaders to shine the spotlight on challenges faced by rural communities. The president says that while government is doing its best to develop rural communities, traditional authorities have a key role to play in nation building. The question of nation building is the responsibility of all of us, perhaps more with traditional leaders social problems including substance abuse are caused by the erosion of traditions and culture why are people today do things that we can say benza boya what can we do to restore dignity to ourselves the president has also appealed to traditional authorities to engage government directly to resolve disputes. President Zuma has challenged traditional leaders to come to government with creative solutions to challenges and not only lodge complaints and grievances with the state. The traditional leaders urged the president to instruct municipalities to respect and acknowledge traditional authorities. Dumaole Mohlaudi, SABC News, Tswane.